Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to derive the governing differential equation of the longitudinal free vibration of a ball. Just imagine that we have got a cantilevered ball with one end that is built into the wall, it is encastered into the wall, and the other end of the ball is free. Let me first define all the geometric properties. This bar has got a length of magnitude capital L. That is one geometric property. Of course, take care of the units. It can be in meter or in mm. Okay. It has got a cross-sectional area of magnitude A. Its unit can be in mm square. These are the geometric properties that, are, that we are considered about. And let me define all the material properties. This bar is made up of material that has got an Young's modulus value of magnitude capital E. Its unit is usually represented as Newton per mm square. Now, is there any other material property that we are bothered about? Yes, there is one more material property that we are concerned about, and that is density. This bar has got a density of magnitude rho. Of course, it is mass density. Its unit is kilogram. Usually, it's kilogram over meter cube. Of course, when we put all the terms together, when we put all the ingredients together, you have to exercise much precision and caution to make sure that the units are consistent. So if you want to work everything in mm, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to localize my tension on a small portion of this bar of length dx. And this small portion is considered at a distance of x from the left extreme end. This bar undergoes vibration. It's a longitudinal vibration, which means that it vibrates to and fro just like that. You see, I will use a highlighter. It just vibrates. It oscillates to and fro just like that. That is longitudinal vibration. On the other hand, if the bar oscillates just like that, that is transverse vibration. So it oscillates in such a way that all the points are moving parallel uh, to the x-axis. Okay. Now, to set the initial motion, you need a force. You need initial disturbance. Okay. So, of course, there is not going to be any force that is going to act on this particular physical scenario except this initial disturbance. So, let us imagine, okay, let us imagine that it is subjected to an initial pull of magnitude capital P. So, that's the magnitude of force, the initial pull that this bar is experiencing. And so, as a result of which, of course, this bar elongates a little bit. So, let me represent that elongation here. Okay. Now, what happens is the moment you leave it, you know, the moment you leave this, the bar goes back to its previous position and it starts oscillating because the moment you stretch the bar, you are doing some work and that work is stored as energy inside the bar, which we call it as the strain energy. And upon the removal of the load, that bar goes back to its previous position and it continues to oscillate. Okay, that is the physical scenario here. I hope you are able to get an intuitive feel of what is actually happening. Now, since I am bothered about this small portion, I am interested only in the small portion. Just to build the governing differential equation, just imagine that this bar can be treated as a series of springs with masses. So just like this. Of course, this analogy is not completely true. But anyway, we are going to leverage information from this analogy. It will help us to get across the concept. So it will help us wrap our mind around what is actually happening. Okay, you can treat this bar as a series of springs with point masses. Okay, this is a highly exaggerated view like this. Now, I am bothered about one particular point mass. And what is that point mass that I am bothered about? Well, I am bothered about only this guy, which I am indicating by red color. You see that? That guy. And that is dx. Just like the same way, so this guy will play the role of this small portion. Okay. Now, the moment you pull this bar, and the moment you leave the bar, the moment you pull the moment you are pulling and the moment you are leaving. So consider the moment that you leave this bar. Okay. What happens is the moment you leave the force, everything tries to go back to its previous position. 
So when it, everything tries to go back to its previous position, this mass also tries to go back to its previous position. So if you look very, very carefully at this particular mass that tries to go back to its previous position, there is a force that is pulling this mass in this direction, okay? That tries to restore the mass back to its previous position. Okay, intuitively you can understand that because you are stretching a spring, okay, it has got a certain stiffness, so it is the force of stiffness, okay, that tends to make the mass go back to its previous position. Remember, stiffness is a property that is not only attributed to springs, but stiffness is also a property that is attributed to bars. So it has got a stiffness, okay. So even in this case, this small portion, if I draw the exaggerated view, there is a force that tries to restore it back to its previous position, that is capital F. And you see, according to Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this is the action force, okay? I will write the word action here. This is the action force that tries to make this small portion go back to its previous position. So this is our action force in this particular physical scenario here that tries to make this entire uh, small mass go back to its previous position. So there is going to be a reaction. So what is the reaction? So in your fresh page, let me tell you that if you have got a mass, if you are standing in deep space, and if you are giving a push to this object, if you are in deep space, just imagine, exercise it in your imagination. You know, this object will continue to move in the direction in which the forces apply, but this object would have given some force back to you, okay? And what is the force that this object gives back to you? That force is MA, okay? So when you are applying a force force of magnitude capital F, there is a reaction force that this object gives back to you, and that will be minus of MA because it is a reaction force that acts in the opposite direction. So the force acts as long as the object is in contact with your hand, okay? And as long as the object is in contact with your hand, the object starts to accelerate, tends to accelerate, and that is this acceleration. And M is the mass of this object, okay? So, which means that that's the magnitude of the force and it gives the same force back to you. So, the reaction force is minus MA. So, in a like manner, the reaction force in our case, okay, is taking place in the opposite direction and that reaction force will be mass times acceleration. In our case, d squared u by dt squared, it's simply called, we can denote that as m u double dot. So, I will represent that here. There is one reaction force, m u double dot. But also remember that all these, all these guys on the right-hand side, you see, when this mass tends to go back to its previous position, when this small mass tends to go back to its previous position, all these guys on this right-hand side, they will not be able to keep up with the small mass that we are bothered about. So they will offer some kind of resistance. They will not go hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder with this small mass. They will drag, you see. So that will off also offer a resistance and that will also offer a resistance and that is denoted a small resist a resisting force. That will be F minus DF. Just for convention, you plus DF. I'm putting F minus DF because I'm saying this is also a reaction, you see, when the mass uh, tends to move in this direction, when this guy tends to move in this direction, of course, one resistance is M into, one reaction is M into a, according to Newton's second law, another reaction is all these guys on the right hand side, they will not be able to keep with that and they are going to offer a reaction and that reaction is F minus DF, you see? So that reaction is F minus DF. So M into U and F minus DF, both are reaction forces. I hope you are all able to intuitively understand the concept. In a like manner, there is going to be F minus df, okay? There is going to be f minus df. There is going to be some kind of resistance that the guys on the right-hand side, these guys on the right-hand side, they will offer to the moment of this shaded portion. There is going to be some kind of resistance that these guys on the right-hand side, they will offer, and that is capital F minus df, okay? If you want to put capital F plus df, perfectly fine, okay? Only thing is that at the end, you will get your, uh, a change in sign, but that's okay. People often put 
f plus df but here intuitively we are trying to understand the concept so definitely it's going to be a force that is less than the action force so i have put f minus df so it's not going to be a force that is greater than the action force so i have put f minus df so according to newton's third law now action is equal to reaction so let me equate the two equations now so if i have to equate the two equations so in the next page let me do that action is f and a reaction is m u double dot okay m u double dot okay plus f minus df so this f on the right hand side and one f on the left hand side they cancel each other out so you're actually going to get df is equal to m into acceleration which is d square u over dt square in the next step it is df if i multiply and divide by dx i'm not going to do any damage to this equation i will multiply and divide by dx so i'm not actually doing any damage to this equation m into d square u by dt square in the next step force can be written in terms of stress because it's a force that is acting on the bar so i can say stress is equal to force by area force is equal to stress into area into dx is equal to mass is density is equal to mass by volume so mass is equal to density m can be written as density into volume volume of the small portion is area into length length is dx into d squared u over dt square in the next step i'm going to cancel this dx on either side so what is that i will be left out with it is going to be d over dx of course i can take this a outside this differentiation so it is sigma can be written as Eng's modulus into strain strain and the strain is du by dx okay int is equal to rho a into d squared u over dt squared maybe i will draw a partition line here okay in the next step one last step it is going to be a e because e is a constant it comes outside of the differentiation there it is d squared u over dt square dx square i'm sorry and that is equal to rho a into d square u over dt square so this is the governing differential equation of the longitudinal vibration of a bar so this governing differential equation has got a secret that is stashed in and what is the secret that is stashed in and what is the procedure with which we are going to take that secret out we will see that in the next video so thank you all for your patience